Neanderthals were never in Papua New Guinea, in the middle of the Pacific, and Neanderthals were never in the Americas. And it turns out that American Indians and the Papua New Guineans have more Neanderthal blood than Europeans. <laughs> Here you can see uh, Green, 2010, this is on the uh, uh, seminal article which they published. A striking observation is that Neanderthals are as closely related to a Chinese and, a, and Papuan individual as to a French individual. Even though morphologically recognizable, Neanderthals exist only in the fossil record of Europe and Western Asia. This may be explained by mixing of early modern humans ancestral to present-day non-Africans with Neanderthals in the Middle East before their expansion into Eurasia. Such a scenario is, and here's the politics of it, listen to this, such a scenario is compatible with the archaeological record which shows that modern humans appeared in the Middle East before 100,000 years ago, whereas the Neanderthals existed in the same region after this time, probably until 50,000 years ago. In other words, they're saying we met, you know, anywhere between 50, what is it, uh, 50,000 and 100,000 years ago, we met with the Neanderthals in the Middle East. But we got a problem with this. And the problem is that, to this day, we cannot show that whatever's in the Middle East is Neanderthal. Let me read uh, uh, a paper. It comes from Arensberg, 1998. And what they do in this paper is they go through and take from all the people who researched uh, Neanderthal or you know whatever the, the skeletons in the Middle East, and and these are the uh, differences that they find. This these are their comments, and they just kind of made a, a collection of all these. And they show you what is the problem. They go to different sites in Israel and Iraq, and they and they look at the bones and say these are not Neanderthals. Look at this. Here's Ehrensberg, the first uh, uh, statement that he makes. There is actually little evidence for the existence of a Southwest Asiatic Neanderthal population in Israel during the Middle Paleolithic period. Another comment. Human fossils originally labeled as Neanderthals were subsequently reevaluated and defined otherwise. A horizontal mandibular foramen, which characterizes 61.5% of the Neanderthals, is absent in Amud 1, Tabun 1, and Shanidar 1. These are caves. Here's Kebara, another cave. Inspection of the available data reveals that most of the listed apomorphies are not in fact exclusive to Neanderthals but occur also within other human groups, including recent populations. Moreover, they are not found in all Neanderthals. Skull, another cave in Israel. The skull remains were eventually further disassociated from this category, Neanderthal, and acknowledged as early anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Okay? Taboon, another cave. Even though the two mandibles recovered from Taboon were originally assigned to the same local Neanderthal population, the morphological differences observed between the two enabled a later reappraisal to consider Taboon II as belonging to an anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Another one. The female skeleton Taboon I was considered by McGowan and Keith to represent a Neanderthal-related human type. Morphological re-examinations, however, do not seem to corroborate this claim. The claim for Taboon I's Neanderthal affinities is not supported by the evidence of mandibular morphology either. Instead, this line of evidence suggests archaic Homo sapiens affinities for this specimen. Kafse. Another cave. Kafsa remains also originally considered as Neanderthals were eventually recognized as AMHS, in other words, anatomically modern humans. This view was later corroborated by the chronological evidence which suggested a much earlier date for these specimens. Amud, another one. Reevaluation of the uh, morphological data concerning Amud 1 reveals that it lacks many of the distinctive Neanderthal features. Amud's 1 occiput deviates markedly from the Neanderthal pattern and its internal occipital protuberance is on almost the same level as the Inyan, rather resembling that of anatomically modern humans. And the last one, Shanidar, that's in Iraq. The Shanidar sample does not display all the characters commonly or exclusively found in European Neanderthal crania. So what are all these uh, reading uh, comments and evaluations tell you. That there were no Neanderthals in the Middle East. At least that's the opinion. Or that they reevaluated the, the Neanderthal bones 
that we talked in the last video. Yeah. Where they, they, they first called them Neanderthals, but then reevaluated them as I humans to fit some sort of theory. I think uh, the bottom line here is there is absolutely, I think there's quite a bit of consensus that the samples found in the Middle East differ measurably, you know, from the samples found in Spain, France, and Germany. In other words, there's a difference between the so-called Neanderthals of Middle East and the Neanderthals proper, the, the ones we, we identified with the uh, first one that we discovered. So many there were Neanderthals at all. I mean, from all those, it sounds like they were humans. Well, they're saying that, what, what these people are saying is, all these bones, they're not Neanderthal at all. Yeah. Uh, they're archaic humans. And in fact, it's highly unlikely that Neanderthals who would develop in the Arctic cold wore no clothes, were barefooted, walking in the snow, would move near the equator. Do polar bears migrate to the equator? They're not going to survive over there. And I don't think the Neanderthals would have gone that far south either. But what about so there is the, no uh, reason for the Neanderthals first to migrate that far south. And second, we notice that there are morphological differences between the samples in the Middle East and those in Western But I thought it was the offspring of humans and Neanderthals that went to the Middle East. No, no, because here we're talking about maybe 80,000 years ago. We're talking about when they just, when, when humans apparently were just coming out of right uh, there. So oh, they met. They met. They, they met. Just, Supposedly uh, that, that was the first line of... Uh, that would make sense. And, and again, we have no evidence that, even assuming these were Neanderthals, we have no evidence. We have not been able to place them at the same time at the same place. <laughs> as of today, right? We can't place the perpetrator in the, the but scene of the crime. <laughs> but let's assume that these were Neanderthals. Uh, it still wouldn't explain the 10 to 1 ratio. 10 if, to 1 ratio? Yeah, if humans outnumber Neanderthals 10 to 1 as the theory holds, yeah. we still should have more uh, Neanderthal blood from Europeans than from everybody else. And if the Asians have more than the Europeans and if the American Indians have more than the Europeans, then all bets are off. If we don't we know what happened. If we all got contaminated yeah. somehow, then all bets are off. Their working hypothesis is If is we met in the bunk. Middle East, the most uh, common ancestry would be in the Middle East, wouldn't it? That's where the, that's where the biggest percentage of no, nuclear DNA overlap. Would maybe be. not, because uh, remember, if we met in the Middle East, it was a one-night stand. Kind of. That's where it started. So Yeah, it started, but what I'm saying is, then we allegedly lived among the Neanderthals you know, in Europe for many thousands of years, okay. and that's where the great majority of, of both populations why didn't we live mix. In, why didn't we live in the Middle East? Why did well, the yeah, Neanderthals yeah, yeah. Go, to, go to the Middle East <laughs> and then back to Europe? No, no, it's not that they left Europe. It's like they expanded into Israel, yeah, but in, still, into Iraq. But then you'd still think that <laughs> that the, the the ground zero would be Middle East, not Europe. No, if we, but if 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 I they, if they came way. from from Europe to the Middle East, and we came from Africa to the Middle East, <laughs> that's ground zero, and so that would be the most, and then the little less, little less, little less, little less, like anything that isn't the Middle East would have less than the Middle East. I, I see it in a different way. Uh, this is what w w the way and the way they see it as well. Here's the great population of Neanderthals in Europe. The majority of them were there. there what's, in, what's in the Middle East is just a, like a trinkle, the, the, the end of the empire. Yeah. It's like uh, you're talking about a little island there, a little peninsula where you know, the, 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 the farthest Neanderthals live. You know? Let, let's assume that's true. Yeah. Well, so now the, the humans come over and they meet these guys in the peninsula, which is the, the end of the empire of the, uh, of the uh, Neanderthal empire. So they meet with them, and so they, they, they have a little bit of sex there, and then they go off to Asia. Well, that has to produce much less than the invasion into Europe of, of a 10 to 1 ratio of humans with Neanderthals, and they mix for thousands of years and have kids you know, galore. True. So that's, that's, so Europeans should have more no, than anybody else, and that's not the case. If Asians and American Indians have more than Europeans, then all bets are off. We don't know what happened. Their working hypothesis is wrong. You cannot infer that because everybody has approximately 2% Neanderthal blood in them, that because of that, you know, uh, we've proven that they made it 40 to 80,000 years ago simply because we have more Neanderthal DNA than Africa.
Uga. So what should we do with the geeks that work at the Max Planck Institute? Well, let me tell you what I just think. Come on,